Well, one of the biggest challenges facing society today is the transition to a low carbon economy and ultimately to a carbon neutral economy. And we're finding students that are coming to our university are expecting to be immersed in some of these issues and how they can be in the forefront of driving solutions for Canada and the world. So we have certainly augmented our curriculum to ensure that there are programs, there are courses available across our campus because oil and gas leaders won't be restricted to engineering or science. I think we'll see all of our students be leaders in this conversation going forward. So we have this year offered for the first time a sustainability certificate. This is that something that students, regardless of their program, can take on top of their normal degree and immerse themselves in some of the technology aspects, policy aspects, and areas that they're interested in to be able to be part of that conversation and to be part of that solution going forward. Well, certainly in Alberta, the energy sector comprises a large part of our economy. And even if you look federally, about 20% of Canada's GDP relies on natural resources sectors. So this is very important to not only our economic well-being, but through that, the quality of life that we enjoy here in Canada. So I think combined with the necessity to be able to provide leadership in an area that's important to us, along with the commitment that Canadians have made on the world stage to again be global leaders, Canada has a huge opportunity to build on our strengths in terms of technology innovation to not only to be leaders here within Canada, to, but to be able to be export that around the world. Uh, Canadian technology, Canadian expertise is valued on the world stage and we certainly see that at the University of Calgary where we not only attract people from around the world who want to study here, to work here, but also to build partnerships with our university. So I think we're very well poised as a sector, as a province and a country to be shining on the world stage. At the University of Calgary, we have harnessed our energy research capacity, excellence and opportunity into the development of an energy research strategy. This has been important because we realize we can't cover the whole terrain of energy research. And within that strategy, we've identified four key challenges where we know we can match our capacity to very important issues facing society, such as unconventional hydrocarbon resources, hydraulic fracturing, looking at a, a low carbon economy, as well as cumulative effects. So within these four areas, we've been very focused at attracting talent, at recruitment of students and in building partnerships. So it's allowed very focused conversations with industry, with government, with other academic institutions, both here in Canada and around the world. And those have generated some very exciting strategic initiatives that is really helping us engage in a way to make an impact that we wouldn't have otherwise been able to do. So we are trying to lead in matching our capability into areas of importance for this province and for this country and through that for the rest of the world. Well, one of the exciting areas that we have been working on here at the University of Calgary is a result of the federal government announcement of $75 million coming to the University of Calgary, an additional $75 million coming to our sister institution, the University of Alberta, to tackle some of the really key issues facing Canada into the future and certainly facing humanity. And that is, of course, the transition to a low carbon economy. What we've been doing is looking at what is the big prize. And the big prize, as far as we're concerned, is being able to uh, develop and produce energy from Canada's vast energy resources. So not having them um, un be able to not be uh, developed, 
but doing it in a way that ultimately will leave all of the carbon in the ground. So how do we extract energy from our unconventional hydrocarbon resources, but ultimately leave that carbon in the ground? If we can do that and not have assets that are left in the ground and not developed for the benefit of Canada and Canadians, then I think we can actually have a winning solution to ensure not only Canada's prosperity going forward, but to ensure that energy assets around the world can be developed for human use. The demand is increasing, but in a way that's going to be truly responsible uh, to the world with respect to leaving carbon in the ground. To me, that's the holy grail. That's what we're working on. It's absolutely key that academic institutions collaborate to move our discoveries from the bench to pilot scale and up ultimately to field scale. That's really important if we're going to see the impact and the investment that is made in the research truly make a difference in terms of driving industry and solving some of these global challenges. We have a lot of partnerships with industry. We've been extremely well supported. It helps bring in top talent from around the world, making sure that we have the right facilities in place and to create pathways to bring our inventions out into a space that's actually going to be usable uh, to companies and to uh, industry as a whole. We do that by not only partnering directly with companies, we also partner with other institutions because we recognize we can't do everything here at the University of Calgary. We have very valuable partnerships with organizations such as SAIT, uh, very complementary in terms of what we have to offer in terms of their testing, piloting facilities, uh, some of the training opportunities that they can provide, as well as other academic institutions across Canada and around the world. In addition to partnering with government agencies directly. So it's looking at this ecosystem and using Innovate Calgary, which is our tech transfer arm, and Kinetica, which is part of that, to accelerate the translation of technology out into the field and ultimately to economic benefit.